with this composition for Ghost Gaming. A lot reliant on Fawalanu, but performed so well in towards map number one. You already see that aggression coming down from him. We'll walk up through the tube, rendezvous to get out, but this is expected. Hunter Thieves holding heavily the space in mid. Koala could be in trouble, but with a rendezvous and a quick shot with the headhunter, he should be out scot free. Spike down. Mid. Oh, but Koala noob at Proto. There you go. Snacking up to three. 800 T. Very close to at least. Slicking away one of those players away towards their spawn, but instead it has to be these last two players from 100 T going into a free A site. Yeah, but there's a trademark. This was the setup all along. Ghost wanted heavy presence in mid and B. Play retake here, and the trademark should spot out. Bang! This will call for the rotations, and oh. I don't even know if this spike will be able to come on down. Actually, yeah. Util a bit too far away. They don't rotate as fast as I expected. So, a post oh. plant here. Two mollies to work with, one from each agent, but Jonas is on bang here. He wants to take an early fight. Kind of has to. I think the odds are just a bit better for his team, but look at this from Ghost. Not a single player actually heading out towards that mid position. Could be considered a bit easier of a battle to try to take on if you are Bang, or if you're really anyone in the middle of that site. Bang essentially gets isolated in a 1vx. That waterfall takes him down a proto. Takes down Stellar 2. Ghost is going to be able to take down the first. Beautiful setup there from Ghost Gaming. Aggression in towards mid. Great work out of Koala Noob. Support flash comes through from Nismo, so no one is able to trade him on out and just gets away. It's his team on a great course. I, I love to see on Pisteron a little bit more kind of gambly aggression, especially when you're playing with a comp like this where you do have that cringe get out of jail free card that the chamber brings to the table and works well for Ghost Gaming in that one. Pistol Rounds continuing to look pretty solid over for Ghost. His 100 Thieves will just look to go fast towards B, hoping to get the spike down in this one. It's going to be two players. Pretty close here, Koala Noob. Does, of course, have that Hent Hunter alongside a Ghost to work with. His teammates should be able to take down that Recon Bolt real quick. But this is not exactly the best of positions for this Head Hunter. Could be able to find maybe one or two, though, out of this. But the classic uppercuts Koala Noob. And the wall will block things on off. There's a risk by placing that rendezvous. Most chambers will just leave the, wande the rendezvous behind the barrier. But in that one, he places it Ooh. forward. So it can be heard. Hunter Thieves expect it. Now they have both a man advantage and a spike plant. With a comp like this, post plants can be so potent no matter your guns. Yeah, exactly that. No matter your guns. And it's classics all the way down the board. Brock is trying to at least find one or two to try to make their way in. Again, that's just probably the most important part. Just make sure that 100T aren't playing these crazy off-angle crossfires in the back of sight. They pretty much have all of that control. It's okay. As time goes by, Stellar. Stellar's actually able to take down two from the very top rope. Nismo coming in. Has to help out a bit. Again, it is still that 2v3, but no guns in the hands of 100T just yet. And Nismo just continuing to frag. Even pulls out the sidearm to complete the frag. Nismo saving the day. Two players survive for Ghost. Great work by Nismo to close things on out. And I also want to give credit to Brock. They realized how heavy the setup for 100 Thieves is in playing that post plant. So he immediately shock darts close on the spike, breaks any uh, killjoy utility that yep. would have been there, and also deals some damage to the players in close. Still, I think for Ghost Gaming, trying to push a player on top of that box in B main and, and moving that rendezvous is a bit of a risk that obviously didn't work out for them. Still, they will just be sticking to the bonus round. The three specters tapped on over. Couple pistols under these looking good. They've spotted B as a Ooh. weak point, but Ghost have changed it up. Three players now stationed on this site. <laughs> yeah, for good reason though. It's still just the SMGs and the pistols that Ghost are trying to save up, or at least trying to make the most mileage out of. Nismo in the front line, almost able to get one, but Derek actually swinging back in. Almost everyone from 100T trying to fight this B main approach, except for potentially one. Of course, that being the spike area all the way over on A. Three players for Ghost at the very beginning of the round over in B main, now only two. Aggression coming out of Brock, though. He wants to walk up in towards main. Asuna and Bang should be holding for this one. But this position in jail could be a little bit spicy. It's a tough angle to clear. Ponytail was spotted, but the trail of Brock's cape was as well. So <laughs> Silver falls on back. Four players over towards this A site, and Hunter Thieves will look to walk into it. Yeah, but Ghost's Four rotation... Nine. Is perfect, but or not under T. They didn't even get information in the back of A. This is just a, a very spiritual take or a very uh, <laughs> almost Nostradamus like rotation. Before they go on in. Yeah. You know, 
was just fully invested in, in that one, I suppose. <laughs> B-Side will be open for the taking here, so maybe 100 Thieves getting the better out of that one. Wall comes on down, Asuna will plant, and in comes seconds. the mollies and the lineups to play towards this post. A little bit less utility than maybe you'd like, because we'll already use that nade, but still. Four mollies across Stellar and Bang make this retake almost impossible. Ghost Gaming will just look to do as much damage as they can. And a couple exits here. So, so pivotal for them. Again, you just look at the economy for 100 T. They haven't won a single round just yet. Still very fragile. Any of these guns that Ghost can take away from them. Oh, consider that a plus for them going forward. But it's not going to happen. Kuala Noob does not take down Bang over towards that mid side. And the crossfire is good to prevent pretty much every kill there except for Will. Nismo now. Last run remaining. 1v4. This might going to go away. He's going to try to at least throw himself out, even though he already has the old point. So, uh... Anything is just for the cash. Two to one. My question comes down to how these teams want to play in the mid control. For, for Hunter Thieves, they have a lot of resources to just play containment and not necessarily have to contest. But for Ghost Gaming, with a comp like this, with, with the chamber and, and with the KO, they're incentivized to, to hold space there. If you can get an operator posted mm -hmm. on that angle under tube or in front of that Viper Orb, you can hold the cross in towards the light round. And that's great against a team like Hunter Thieves that loves playing their defaults, loves swinging things back and forth in the light round. Even with a composition like this that's reliant on getting the spike plant down, they really rarely fully force a spike down and, and put themselves in disadvantageous positions. Instead, they tend to play patient. So that's the space I'm watching in this round as Kuala Noob's off will instead be over towards the B site and will be spotted out by the drone. Ooh, spotted even more. Recon Bolt's going to go out. Ends up using that rendezvous. Getting out of there. And like you, you said, Mimi, 100 T. Very much setting up for the long run. They're actually going to put up a lockdown here on B as a fake. Yeah, it's just a fake. How many players will bite off this one? Because look, a drone's coming back through mid. That doesn't spot anyone out. Drone. And that'll be the call for the rotation off. The lockdown actually goes deep enough yeah. that no one can hold the deep angle in A. And while Will is out holding close on sight, his life doesn't really matter here. His only priority is buying time, and yep. he does for at least a few seconds. Spike can come down on it. No, oh, perfect. He did his job. Of course, he would have wanted one or two kills out of that. But the entire time that 100T needed to actually rotate their way over, did exactly that. So here we go. Four on three. Not too, too much utility to look at in terms of this retake here for Ghost, but you have to watch out for 100T. They do have a shock. They do have double mollies to utilize. Suppress right now. Austin, I just can't make his way out. Just can't do anything, but this is such a pivotal position. This wall, nobody's going to check right in front of them, are they? No, they're not. Austin is able to get one, but he spotted two. Brock's still taking one back on a bang, and it's a 1v3 for Derek. He does have the angle, but so does everyone else. The defuse will go down for Ghost for a third. Really excellent retake there out of Ghost Gaming. Hunter Thieves thus far have managed to get the spike plant down. Every single one of these rounds. And they've won three out of four of them. Excellent work on the retake. And a big part of that is how proactive they've been in the early round. They know yeah. Hunter Thieves is a team that likes to default a little bit. They're drawing out as much utility as possible in that one and putting themselves in these positions. Where they can just spam on down. Enough Util on their side saves on up and play well in for these retakes. The read that there'd be a player up towards the second story. And even if they didn't quite take him down initially, killing Asuna there before there's time to fully spam down that wall forces players to swing on forward. Also, losing Stellar yeah. early. You lack out on two of your mollies. A couple critical kills there. And suddenly Ghost Gaming is in a great position. And well, the position in this round is aggressive. All boost up for Koala Noob. Spot space early towards A main. They realize it's unlikely to be a play in this direction. So invest rotations over towards the B side. Yeah, look how fast this rotation is. Four players are going to be in the middle of this B side by the time 100 team make their way on. The recon bolt might help a little bit, but nobody's actually getting spotted by it. The side is going to be free for them to actually get this plant, but is it going to be a high value plant? I love this orb. Spike denial is the goal here on the wide angle. Plant will be committed and. Spam Ooh, will not quite get enough damage done onto Asuna, but Spike Plant is down and while Asuna dies, the characters with the good post plant utility, those agents yep. in Stellar, Derek, Will, and Bang are still alive. Oh, Nismo! The knife could be so big. Could it deny potentially a, vi or a Viper, oh, or, excuse me, a Snake Biter too? And indeed it does! It suppressed absolutely everyone in that back line! Now they have to approach. Now they have to fight. Take down these players before they can get that utility back. Stellar does take down Koala Noob though, and Stellar just keeps going. This could just be the hold they need, and indeed it happens! 
They have enough time to throw out their snake bites and three kills come in from Stellar at the same time. The Viper's Pit biting away so much damage. Bang on the front line trying to find John QT, but the spike is not down to half. Oh, a hundred T. One or two seconds there, one or two interactions don't go their way. Could easily go to Ghost, but they fight tooth and nail for a second. See, it, it looks really scary there, and it does that. That knife coming on through provides a lot of value in delaying that utility. But the thing is, these post hunts for 100 Thieves, they just have players who are just dedicated to being the sacrifice. And usually, <laughs> in order of importance, it's Asuna, then Will, then Derek. Just as long as Bang and Cell are alive in these late rounds, they will win rounds just off that clock being ticked on down. That's exactly what happened there. Asuna dies off the rip. It's a 5v4, but they have a Viper's Pit up. That stalls more time. They lose another player. Still Viper's Pit, still stall, <laughs> and it's the utility that wins it in the end there for 100 Thieves. Those layers are really tough to break. A little sad. Not at this point. Under T. Are dealing with a bit of pressure back over towards that A main area, but they have dissipated it quite a bit. Ghost backing up towards the back of their own site. Gonna have to be at least immediate action to try to stop this push back over and short. That wall actually <laughs> being quite the pain in the side of Ghost right now because, again, it is just pistols. They're barely able to break it down. Lange is able to go down without a single casualty, though. You have a little on the front side. Potentially able to farm up a couple of frags. That old drone actually pretty big. They can actually burst out of the wall if they absolutely wanted to, but they're not going to be able to do so. Koala Noob, the only person with a rifle here, could make a bit of an impact. But we actually just need to have the approaches. We actually need to have some open space for this team. What is this wall here? It's perfect for the gap, or it's perfect, at least for a little cubby for that defuse, but it's just not going to happen for the round. Finally, the kills goes in, but Koala and Proto get some trades back. 3-3. Three to three. Really nice late round flank from Bang. Thus far, Ghosts have, or excuse me, 100 Thieves have conditioned Ghosts that there isn't going to be flanks in the late round that's just a committal in towards playing this post plant. And this one, he works the space there on the anti eco. And in a big way, I might have saved the round. That player stays alive. Spike was already halved. You hold things down. Molly misses. Some little thing goes wrong. And things could have gotten pretty bad for 100 Thieves, but they don't in this one. Ghost Gaming will have the money back in their favor. And they have a Viper's Pit to use early here. As well as that operator for Koala Noob. He's playing the same position as his Viper right now, so I'd imagine this is a close pit. He can either hold the angle above, or it appears just elect to play back, make sure no one gets tricky up mm -hmm. top that rope. He's going to hold that angle for the rope like you said, but he is going to be well bursting through that rendezvous. Does save him for a second there, but a Proto, he's the one that has to hold it down. He's the one that has to keep his Viper's pit alive. He is able to take down one in terms of Arsenal, but the rest doesn't happen. Brock actually, early on, pulling out his Hunter's Fury. He's not able to catch absolutely anything. You should run. Yeah, but look at this flank already coming through. Ghost has found <gasps> a lot of space, and there's nothing watching this. The turret is deactivated players too far away. The lockdown will go. Now Ghost's priority is just to keep 100 Thieves preoccupied. Keep them focused on the fight for the front site, and that job has been done well. A player detained, but the flank's still coming through, and Bang's making noise. He's not looking, and he'll die to John. There goes that one kill from John. Do they have any idea that a second is here? Nismo up top looking for an angle on the Stellar, but Stellar is just going to be waiting for potentially a cross back. Oh, the barrel spotted, and Nismo takes him down. Only two players remaining, and they're getting sandwiched. Players from Ghost coming in from every single angle possible, and it's going to work out for all the pressure in the world. John QT takes down three off the flank, and it's going to give Ghost a fourth. The trend has continued every single round. 100 Thieves is getting this spike down, but it's different than usual. Ghost Gaming has found consistent success in playing this retake in the flank in that one. A big part of it, finding space on the back line, catching an off timing for Bang, denying that utility before it can find value. Wins them out on the round. A bold call by 100 Thieves. Showstopper straight on through. Try and punish the player in the pit initially. Works so well for them, but still. Tried injured, getting that plant down. Not finding full success in this one. Back to it now. Under T. They're going to have their guns back going into the next. We've seen such overwhelming pressure from Ghost off of retake so far. It's actually been... Kind of funny that 100 C, they've been able to have actually pretty easy access to the sites that they've actually been able to get plants for, but Ghost's retakes have been so good so far. You could at least put that on a couple of players. Of course, Nismo and Kualanub have actually been pretty good off those retakes, but overall, Util for this team has been so good in those situations.
Yeah, and a lot of that is Nismo and Brock pushing players back, mm -hmm. buying that time. The thieves won't be able to buy in this one though. Just the lesser weapons to work with, and no big ults to change the tide of this round. I hope to maybe get that spike plant down, win off your utility, but even that is proven to be troublesome. Ghost Gaming continues to show different setups on this defense. They're very variable in where they position this operator for quality. Sometimes it's what's B main, sometimes it's up top on A, <laughs> giving him that freedom. Have a lot of value in these opening kills. That's actually the eco here. Half buy from 100 C. Actually, that's meaning that it, now that we're seeing this uh, this default, these types of guns, it's actually beg to differ what their goal actually is because they're not getting any sort of progress back over towards that mid side where potentially those pistols could make some more damage. Back over in B, no matter what they tried, they're not able to get anything. It was just about the presence, see if they could potentially get a fake, pull a rotation or two. It's going to end up here on A. Ghost Gaming was worried about the play towards mid. They've run it out. Now they know it's over towards A, and John starts his way. Right. It's going to be John with the first. John continuing, actually. It's only that one other player back over towards elbow. Now, point your eyes over towards a proto. Proto, a massive opportunity for one, two, or three. His Viper's Pit is all the way down to zero in terms of the old points, but he, he could actually make some pretty decent progress to it. Indeed he does. He's only able to get two out of that, but Brock gets the last. A Prime Gaming Flawless to give Ghost a fifth. They work out of Ghost Gaming. The position yep, they were gaming. on these... Yeah, they were gaming. Very true, mm -hmm. very true, Gus. <laughs> uh, the orb positioning for a proto. I, I really like the switch ups he's making. He's really committed to, to setting these orbs up just for anti-plant to, to make that chip damage all the better. You, you'll see it sometimes over towards B on that position that's the default plant for 100 Thieves, sometimes over on A in the position you see it now. Well, that not only denies entry in towards the site, it makes it all the more difficult to try and stick that plant or, or, dis, or, or disrespect the setup, which 100 Thieves doesn't do a lot, but they don't even really have the opportunity. In this one, Koala, though, he's so deep. He can push forward off the knife, has information from it, and he'll grab the frag onto Derek. That's only the one he needs. Now Nismo on the front side. Ooh, he's gonna get caught by the alarm bomb, but he just wanted the frag. Will was fully flashed. You will not the fact that he gets that kill onto Nismo is a miracle. Only one person left here on B. Ghost, putting a lot of chips on the fact that it might be A. Yeah. Four players there. They have quality in this critical angle. No, if a cross is coming either way, and now that turret broken. It's pressure on 100 Thieves to keep the player containing that space. Koala will re-rotate back. Correct angle here. You can just get Let one, get out. Open. The retake is so doable. Koala Noob, such a difficult position, but again, he's playing for his rendezvous. It's such a good off angle, but Will with the satchel doesn't get caught whatsoever. That wall will be good for the plant. No post-plant util, though, at least so far. I'm sure Stellar could come back and try to help out, but he is in quite the important position back over in mid. A Proto looking around the corner, and Stellar is going to have no effect on the later parts of this round. Yeah, but still, time is an issue. Double shock starts. The Mamali is available for Bang. He'll use his first one already. He's still quite slow. You still have this wall in front of them. They're just throwing out whatever util they can to actually be able to burst out from that yellow box. But again, so much time being crunched off the clock. 100T, they have no angle though. They have no one in yellow box. They need to burst through this wall and it's gonna work. Knock down the walls and knock down all the pins. 100T, they take a round. Will has been so proactive in these post plants and so many of the rounds just proving himself as a sacrifice in that one. Doing it all to keep things going. Wall plays don't tend to be so effective <laughs> against 100 Thieves. It's just always going to have that one player holding back. Satchel goes through, spam is off that. 100 Thieves, well, they're dedicated to playing the post off this utility. They're never afraid to fight and having kind of both those options, depending on how much time is left, is what makes them so good in those situations. Still, post gaming, plenty left to spare and a push up over towards A, three players strong. This is a lot of info, but... I don't know what they're actually going to be able to do with this info. It's only that one player watching back over towards that mid side. It has to be Koala Noob that needs to be shifty. He just randomly lost a shot behind the wall and it just works. He was trying to track the foot, uh, the footsteps, if I'm not mistaken. But Nismo over towards the mid side does at least take down one. Ghost now. They find themselves in the 5v3 already. They do a missed shot. 
A koala, so Spike will be able to make its way on down. Bar the shock darts finding Ooh, something. It's stellar. Instead, he finds Valerie and knows that the round is on him. He'll push deeper, walk past danger. If a oh. Bodo swings, this could get so weird, but he's holding his nerve. Not swinging forward just yet. Now we'll take the duel, but it's only Retreat. one. Derek on the trade back. It started so strong for Ghost, and now a two v two in the post. Oh, we are going to see a revive though. There's one in the middle of this site. It's going to be Brock, and lift it up. And not only that, okay, the recon bolt too. A massive piece of util to get back into the site. They even had a flash to use too. How are they going to utilize it? Nismo getting revealed at the moment. Derek, a massive peek, but he's only able to get two. This angle from Asuna could be so big. Does he find the diffuser? No, he won't. And the diffuse will go down to the very end, but it's going to be the defuse from Brock. Six four now. Ghost gaming continuing to get these post points done. In this one, it was them taking advantage of those flanks. Thus far, Ghost Gaming, uh, well, they've had a few rounds where they're committing in towards those flank plays. Generally, they're just playing hard retake on their spawn side. But the walk up through A main, it was always happening with that op shot connecting. There's an expectation from Hunter Fuse that there'll be more pressure on that B site. They just look to continue in that direction, and flank is so, so punishing. Big alts here, though. Stellar has the lockdown. Generally, you'll see them just go B all the time. <laughs> Unless you have a lockdown, then you can go away and take that space. Mm -hmm. Ate alongside the shock dart. Being sure that all important ult dart with only two rounds remaining gets pressured out. Doesn't exactly equate into a frag though, but look at this position from Nismo. The owl drone's gonna go around. It's not gonna spot him. Will might have been able to spot him though. Maybe through the maybe through the radar, but it's not gonna happen. Nismo can now just play whack-a-mole here, but is it actually Asuna gonna be able to pop out? No, yeah, he wants to play with him. Nismo still aiming for a shot or two, and Derek, that jump up was actually a really good idea. Splitting the angle with Asuna. At least splitting the attention of Nismo, and the lockdown's gonna be able to go out, and it's gonna be pretty much a free A site. Mid flank is coming through here. A player walks up. That's bang. No I don't know if he has utility to block off that arm bot, and he doesn't. So we force to fall away. But that Hunter's Fury is perfection. Goes to the gap the behind the lockdown, but Brock is still alive despite it all. Pushes forward, finds a double. Spike is on the ground. A proto is flanking. This round might just be over because it's Derek left with the clutch, and well, he'll find the first. Oh, Molly's Hunter's Fury's shock darts. What more do you need to take him down, Brock? Again, in such a pivotal situation. Left. Such a pivotal position. It's essentially the catalyst that puts his team in this two-man advantage here. Derek, dancing on top, is able to find at least one in terms of bodies, in terms of information, but definitely not the frag. Gianni's still alive, and Gianni's going to get the kill. Seven to four. Ghost looking for a big half. Last round in the half. Big one indeed here. I believe that's the first round all game that we actually got denial of the spike. Every other <laughs> round but that one. Spike comes down, gets planted for 100 Thieves, but Ghost changed that up. Two rounds, one in a row. They'll take the timeout. They know the difference between 8 4, 7 5. Very big in this game. I mean, what a game so far, at least from Ghost. I feel as if most of the holes from them have been quite straightforward. So let's talk about 100 T real quick. We were talking about the conditioning for them early on in the half, how they were barely touching around mid, but still very much having a presence. Mimi, what happened to that? 100 T, they've completely abandoned it. I mean, they're still putting that turret there. That's generally just kind of always going to be there. Stellar posts that up. Not too much walk-up coming through, but it's always a big risk to actually try and commit in towards that space. You saw that previous round, Bang went for a lurk, but there was still a trademark in position towards the kitchen. You see pings coming out there, so maybe they'll try and change that round with the changes to Icebox. And with a comp like this, double satchel your raise up over. You can find a lot of value from these splits in towards B. And pings... Imagine that's actually what they're going to go for in this one. Ghost Gaming doesn't tend to position a lot of players there, but they've had good reads just in the previous round. They realized it was going to be a hit towards A, provide aggression in that area, win the round off of it. Let's see what Ghost are actually thinking about this round, though, because I don't think we're going to get too much of that B main aggression, potentially. Definitely a bit of a lineup, though, early on, and that might actually help for that quote-unquote peak. It'll be Nismo alongside Kuala Noob on that front side. They are able to actually detect too. That's a big detection. Well, that's a showstopper. I feel like that's going to be the linchpin in this round. How much value you can find, how much space you can create off of it. Bang one away. And that fight was built by these hundreds. Wow. Oh, it's perfect. Wow. They know they're in main. It is a death trap. Brock oh, again. shuts down too. The op was there on the other side. And even insulting injury. These two players locked out. The spike's still in their possession, but they're just going to be walking 
into a viper's pit. I mean, ghosts just win. <laughs> it's just, it's just a hunter, uh, just a hunter's fury does it. Just well placed again. You had that knife come out, get that information over in B main, but it was so long after that, we actually got the hunter's fury. It's good positioning there from Ghost back over in B main, making sure that 100T could take up as much control as possible without Ghost needing to fight. And it's going to work out for a prime gaming flawless to finish up the half. Ghost looking so good to go into the second half. Let's see how they finish things up as we look through the prime gaming flawless. A tough half for 100 Thieves, but a defensive side in which they can look to rally. Normally stoic in their post plans. Ghost Gaming proved adept in the retakes and find themselves just a few rounds away from the better seed. 100 Thieves, yeah. they're going to start off potentially with a bit of aggression back over towards B main, and that's exactly where Ghost is going. Now that it is. Being set up here, Seller will just look to place that Molly under tube, deny any aggression in that area, but. Aggression instead is coming over towards main, drone out. Their thieves will concede on back, but they have the raise to deny plant. If that nade can go on in, if a wall from Austin could go on in, they can buy yep. time for the rest of the team to rotate. And instead of rotating, they're actually re-pushing again. Koala has to contain this, oh! and they just can't. Somehow that combo mid actually works out for the frag. Derek in one fell swoop takes down Koala. Noob, still have Will around the corner. Such a cheeky little spot for Will, too! But an even better little elevator there for Brock as he takes down Will from above. That flash is even better, though. Nismo looking for a 50-50 against Austin, and indeed it works. And he's able to take down another one in terms of Stellar. A proto back over in mid. Spots Bang, but not able to get a couple of bullets in. Bang could easily get flanked on in just a couple of seconds here, and he has no clue. He's trying to get into a firing range type position. But, oh! What? A proto comes up from behind, but Bang calls him out completely the <laughs> the knife hits bang right into his chest but he's just fine still 92 hp to work with uh oh no he has to break through the wall to actually get through a little bit awkward here but he still has one of his snake bites to work with but it's not exactly beneficial he has a sova behind him he has another person in front of him nismo barely peeking out but is able to get the frag nine to four what a great round there by ghost gaming they initially lose a player in towards mid, but the quick hit out on site, the aggression forward from Nismo was all lovely, but the thing I'm looking towards is the play that they had in mid. You saw Proto, pucked back in that area, just looking, looking to hold down the 
flank there with the help of the trademark positioned outside A. I believe he even had a molly lineup from that position in mid, similar to the lineups that EG were using when they planted up pop. Uh, but from that position, you can toss out your snake bites, buy a little bit of time, and then flank in the very late round. I'm going forward. We are going to have more presence from Ghost, potentially trying to shut down some of those flanks. Or at least potential. Presence back over in B main alongside a lot of early util back over in A main, but it's actually just quite the opposite. It's just an early fake setup. Here. Deploying drone. going to hear that. Yeah. They're aware that this is more likely to be a heavier setup over towards the A site. And they'll just drone over towards B. Viper wall, this should all be pretty simple to win things on out. They're being very thorough in the angles they do clear. But in doing so, they have given time for 100 Thieves to start to rotate on over. No matter the weapons, a race nade can still find a lot of value into delaying that plant or finding frags on a player stuck in close. Ooh, great snake bite too. Leaves not so much space for this team to actually get this plant down. Very good wall to pressure up from Nismo alongside the shock darts. Into the top is working out for a bit of damage, but finally the Spectres are making the difference in this round. Only one person remaining. Asuna. Looking to peek out. Potentially get one. Probably the only one. Still stuck with a classic, but a proto from behind. Four kills from a proto. We gotta look at his old points. Yeah. I'm wondering yeah. now if that's a pivot for how Ghost play this next round. Uh, play forward, either Maybe. get a proto to plant things on down, grab an orb. Such Spectres a big win can condition. be so good if you get yourself in towards a post plant with that Viper's Pit. It might just be the idea. They're looking to lean heavily over towards A. I hope it's to get themselves in towards a post plant position, but the under the setup will be good to delay. They show a lot of looks with this Killjoy on the defensive side. A lot Sometimes it's playing over towards mid, holding down the fort for a kitchen walk up or anyone trying to get sneaky under tube. And sometimes it's a bit of a more forward setup. And in this one, it's a, uh, it's a turret that can contact and support mm -hmm. Will as well as Molly's to buy space for the team. The rule's just going to back up all the way back over towards mid. So Stellar is the only one that has to depend on, of course, that utility. Not even going to get utilized, though. He does run away. Full sight take is going to happen here for Ghost. Well, it does take down one, though. Again, we are still looking at SMGs alongside the Ghost for this team. The long-range interactions aren't going to go great for them. And the shock darts just rain in. It doesn't matter what they're trying to do in terms of that plant. They have the right util to deny it. Still just about a minute left, but Ghost are already down to three. And at this point, I don't think they even want to use that Viper's Pit. Nothing committed off of it. Dart goes in deep. This one wants a fight here. He has a pop flash to go through the wall, but Stellar was ready for it. Shuts down. The trade is good, but oh, Brock. somehow Brock still finds that kill. Bang on a trade mm. back, though. And he keeps the round all nice and tight. in good shape for him. What you expected again. The ghost. Now they are going to get that full Viper's Pit out and ready for this next round. Quite the opposite here for 100 T. They don't have it, but they actually are only one old point away from it, too. Bang. I was actually want to contest and try to get that old point early. Could potentially try to cover off one of these mains, but it's not going to happen. He's going to be quite far away to actually fight over for B. So now it's just goes all the way back over in A. Really slow up off the rip to the aggression up top, but slow up goes the other way. I, I was thinking that maybe that was a play to slow up top and then Sage Wall boost fight forward, but... Mm -hmm. Nothing more happens off of it. An interesting idea, but it seemed like they still wanted that control. At least on top of the ult orb. Here comes the actual approach. You see a wall go up over in short. Aldrone was able to catch at least two there for 100T. But this wall here, this is just separating the space. And 100T have complete control of same thing with Ghost. And it's going to converge in just a little bit. It's 50-50 on top of 50-50. Our ghost actually going to look to pop through this wall. It's such a volatile wall. Oh, that forward for Derek. Oh! He'll swing off of it. Reveals three. Takes one. Ah, that is such a good shot. Or, excuse me, recon bolt there from Derek. And he ends up swinging out with it. But a proto. Was that a spray transfer? It doesn't even matter. He still keeps going. But he just Damn dies to the molly. He could have backed up into the corner. He could have stayed alive. But instead, Brock forced now into a 1v2. Definitely helped about. I does huge kills from a proto. 
a little bit early on, but again, Brock, full control of the back of sight. He doesn't see anyone. It's purely because 100T, they're wrapping back from the back of A main. Brock, 18 seconds left, 17 seconds left. He doesn't even have the option to rotate. He's just looking to fake. He's just looking to find anyone. Bang, is he actually going to peek this with the spike knocked down? Indeed, he will. It's a 1v1 now. Stellar has no idea where this man is. Time is running out. The plane will be able to go down, but Stellar has the angle. Sixth round back for 100 Thieves. They are back in this game. Very calculated bait there by Stellar. There's a high risk if he just swings to trade his teammate. If he just stops, waits, then that starts to put so many questions into the head of Brock. And well, the answers didn't quite work out for him. He was worried about someone re-pushing from defensive spawn from a second flank. And the angle was just right to close on that. These rounds are massive for 100 Thieves. At the, de at the deficit they currently find themselves, just losing one or two gun rounds totally slips the balance away from you. I mean, look at this. I mean, they're even left the shorty in the hands of Qualinu. But is Qualinu playing shorty full armor? It's because he has the headhunter, so he'll just be able to. Use oh that right, yeah, 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 yeah. Shorty's oh. the secondary. Yeah, I, I wish that's he was gaming. Just using that's shorty. Mm -hmm. be a little mm -hmm. more fun. Ooh, similar hunter spearing <laughs> setup to what we saw in the first half. This one will find quite a bit less value, though. I do want to talk about. We well, have this one, the anti eco, about the performance that a proto has found. <laughs> if he doesn't die to the molly in that previous round, they probably win things on out. He was able to pick up three, had the Viper's Pit to be able to hold on down. And so many of these rounds, yeah. specifically on the attacking side, the value that he's found has been great. It's not even in late round lurks, it's been in some really proactive plays uh, to mm -hmm. make it as close as it has been in these rounds for Ghost Gaming. Ghost, I have finally approached your all five. Again, with the low guns, with the low pistols. You have that full control, though. Great shark dart. They want to push deep. They put down this wall, flash on through, and Will's going to be isolated in that corner. Nismo's going to be able to get a free one. What was that shot from Nismo? Okay, buddy. That's going to be the plan there, but uh, it's the hero rifle. It's called a hero rifle for a reason. Hunter's Theory already out. Brock looking for anyone in the back of Snowman, but not going to be able to find anyone. The revive does go in, but Asuna is able to find a lineup. Derek, though, the last run remaining in a 1v3, has so many angles to peak. That headshot was so good onto John, though. Does he find a proto? A proto shocks him, though, from around the corner. Three kills from a proto. 11 rounds for Ghost. I don't know why we don't see Thrifty at the top of our screen, but we absolutely should. It was the hero rifle that did the damage. But Ghost, they come out with highway robbery. Dude, a, a proto and Nismo. The value they're finding in these rounds is so big. They've conditioned that this team is one that will just commit in towards the early plant. Look, they posted a similar style to 100 Thieves, but they do the extension. Wall deep, flash through their own wall, and, well... Find so much off of it. 100 Thieves forced into the timeout off that loss. Such an important timeout for 100 Thieves. I think potentially they could invest into this round because, again, still went out the two. Relatively close round in the last. Man, oh man, this is now just uncharted territory. Ghost, a team that we just haven't seen play on Icebox so far this season, or excuse me, the way around. Oh no, I was right, what am I saying? I am right. So Ghost, oh, right. at least so far, from what we ended up seeing in the preseason, from the Icebox games that we ended up seeing in the preseason, Proto, he just didn't have the effect that we're looking at now. It it's was, a wild game for him. It is, it is, but again, a lot of his damage ended up coming out from that defensive side, and again, Viper here on Icebox just hasn't been that big. I'm an effective agent, at least in the last few updates, in the last few months. But a Proto has absolutely stepped up to the plate. 24 kills for him. Here we go into the next, folks. 100T. They're indeed going to stick around with the shares with the pistols, and they're all the way over in B mostly. Viper's still generally that primary controller, but certainly a lot more out of the omens. And well, in this one, Bang's going to try and find the bits. He'll pop down the ult, but they're hunting for him, just trying to spray through the Viper's pit itself. The shock darts it now works. more potent, and they connect. Ooh. Bang is down, and the plants soon to follow. Ghost Gaming have themselves a great post split, and a Protoss is going to lock down the flank. He'll find three. This man continues to stand up for Ghost Gaming. Is Derek? Oh, he's alone. 1v5, a ghost. There's just no chance. A Prime Gaming flawless. To take series point. Match point. Not to take series point, to go into series point, but it does make that difference. This one last round here for 100T. 
They had pistols in the last. They're going to have their rifles. They're going to have a couple ultis to work with, too. That was a big round for Ghost to a Proto. Able to charge up that Viper's Pit. Now six rounds separate Ghost and 100 Thieves. Can 100 Thieves salvage their number one seed hopes? Hopes on the line for him. 100 Thieves. We'll start to try and again play a little bit forward for Asuna. Same slow field. Same one again in reply. Hunter Thieves just walked up deep in towards B main though. That Roomba has been spotted, so Ghost Gaming is aware. The will could be close on this one. It's gonna be very dangerous to reclear this space. Drone comes through towards Aemon. That doesn't spot the chamber, so now things get awkward. A bit of lurk on lurk action. It's not gonna get too too awkward though. Unless we actually do get a pro get that approach from a hundred thieves back over in B main, but this is big now. There's a man in kitchen looking for this cross, looking for this information. It's rare that we've even had presence back over in kitchen. And indeed, it's happening. Stellar. There goes his turret. And is he, is he gonna use a lockdown here? It's a risk for sure. He has support of his teammate now, but I like the idea. But it's down below there. I don't think he can get wall bang from above. So they'll either force a fight forward, but Koala Noob this whole time, he had worked his way deep in towards A. And now with that lockdown pushing the team back, things get, again, very strange. The long pit is popped down. Two players detained inside it. Asta has to make the tough decision of whether or not to fight this, but another Ooh. flank on top of another flank. Will from behind takes Nismo, but still, the pit is active. Man, it's a weird one to clear if you're 100 Thieves. These are just such awkward positions. Asuna, he gets caught out. Finally, a plan going in. Bang's not going to be able to deny it, but he definitely sees it. Oh, what was that? The Satchel knocks down Brock and Bang. He gets a free one for him. Did Will kill his own teammates? Oh, my word. Koala Noob from below looking for the kill. And it's still just such an awkward position with such low HP in the middle of that site. But Bang sneaks out of the Viper's Pit and takes down Koala Noob. Now a 1v1 between himself and a Proto. Again, Bang. This isn't his pit. He goes all the way down to 1 HP. He has to go to the second level to try to defuse. Surely a Proto has this. Surely the Molly should take him down. It's only 1 HP. Bang can't do anything. He has to look for a Proto and it's not gonna happen. Ghosts go four and one of the season with a massive win over 100 Thieves. They knock 100 Thieves out of contention, meaning Xset claim the first seed in Group A. Ghost falling into second place. What a rally from this squad, from a team completely or, or relatively so unknown at this level and challengers coming on in. They qualify through the open bracket. They've made the improvements to the team and they come out swinging.